بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه من والاه أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ونادى نوح بنه وكان في معزل يا بني اركب معنا ولا تكن مع الكافرين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وجعل لي وزيرا من أهلي آمين يا رب العالمين Before I can start, uh, let me tell you these few things first that uh, Muhammad Jamali, Sheikh Muhammad Jamali was supposed to give khutbah, but just before a few minutes, uh, he had some family emergency. So uh, first of all, we have to make dua that may Allah make it easy for him. So I didn't get a chance to prepare that much, but because I was talking for the last two weeks on a particular issue, I just want to continue the theme. And uh, I was reading this book a few days ago. Ya Bunay Irkab Ma'ana. It's actually by Dr. Nazmi Khalil Abu Lata Musa from Dar es Salaam Misr, published by Dar es Salaam Misr. He is actually a PhD in philosophy, um, and that's his topic, Raddu Al Mulhideen, how to refute to atheists and agnost. Uh, so he wrote a beautiful book responding to parents and to the kids um, how to talk to your kids about this issue. Obviously, the intellectual and emotional arguments, I would leave it for the workshop, but getting inspiration from the conversation of Nuh alayhi salam and what is the lesson for us as parents and even if you are listening to this as a teenager Ya Bunay Irkab Ma'ana this entire phrase I will explain to you in a minute what does it mean we're going to focus on that inshallah in this khutbah you know this conversation in Surah Hud where Nuh alayhi salam is talking to one of his sons how many sons Nuh alayhi salam had historically we know that Nuh al Islam had four sons, and uh, their names mentioned in the books like Sam, Yafis, Yam, Ham. And the son which didn't believe and became a disbeliever and drowned, his name was Yam. But it doesn't matter what was the name, the more important point is actually the lesson from the story. Interestingly, the three sons of Nuh al Islam who were in the ship, who were in the boat, there's no discussion about that in the Quran. But the discussion, the camera is focused on that one discussion which he had with his one disbeliever son. And the reason why I'm saying this is because I wanted to speak about this topic. I remember briefly I gave in Khataras also about this, about two primary reasons why I think this conversation is extremely important for our families, Muslim families living in Western countries. First, American Muslims, in the generally Muslims in the West, as a minority, we also have a fear that our kids will be blend into this mainstream America and eventually they will lose Islam. If you don't have that concern, then really inna lillahi wa inna lillahi rajiun. Every minority, regardless of the faith-based minority or which faith they are following, they have this concern if they are serious parents. So we should have this concern as a minority that we don't want our kids to blend in and eventually they will lose their faith. Similarly, Nuh Ali Salam, after inviting almost 950 years to his people, so he was still with a minority. And still he had this concern that one of his son was taken away with the predominant religion of that time. So he had this concern. So it's very similar what Nuh Ali Salam had and what our parents should have. Second, what, what is more concerning to me when I read this passage? And when, as an imam of practicing Muslim brothers and sisters like you all, our kids are relatively practicing Muslim. That's why you all are here, right? Because majority of the Muslims in America, they're not praying Jummah. Don't fool yourself. You, the fact that you are praying Jummah and you are here in the masjid, it means that I'm somewhat comparatively practicing Muslim. And it's still our kids are taken away. Recently I was talking to different Imams in Chicago, in Dallas, and I actually figured out that in just one or two years there were six or seven teenagers from Muslim community became atheists. I shared the statistics with you I guess in the last khutbah. Three Hafaz, one of them led Tarawi last year, he departed. Not the body, but the soul. <laughs> soul of Islam, soul of faith. And I was thinking, why? And then I actually related this incident. 
the best Islamic school at the time of Nuh alayhi salam was the house of Nuh alayhi salam. Yes or no? The best masjid environment was the house of Nuh alayhi salam. The best tarbiyah, the best teacher, the best speaker, the best murabbi was Nuh alayhi salam. Yes or no? Still, one of his son was missing. Isn't that give a goosebumps why it happened? With such a precautionary, preventive major, so still he lost one of his son. So we have to see what happened. In this context, I will just, uh, it's not even tafsir, it's just reflection on these ayat and connecting it to our times, inshallah. Because I know this is not tafsir class, this is khutbah. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that Nuh al -Islam invited his people for a long, long time. They didn't believe. After a long time, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to punish his people. Allah asked him to construct a ship. We all know this. He asked Nuh al -Islam, construct a ship. We will teach you how to do it. You are going to do this in our observation, in our wahi, in our inspiration. And do not ask me, do not talk to me about those people who launch themselves. They will be drowned. Then Nuh alayhi salam started constructing a ship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him to take all the people who believed in the ship because the flood will come. And as soon as water started gushing from earth, as soon as it started pouring from the sky, and now ship is sailing, Nuh alayhi salam realized that actually now the people outside will be drowned and I can make a final conversation. And he asked his son. One of his son was missing. He says, Ya Bunay Irkab Ma'ana. And I want to take a pause here. Remember, I told you that there are a few kids from Islamic school, few who follow the Quran. A shaitan can put in your mind right now that I'm saying all the Islamic schools are bad. Right? Did I say no al Islam house was bad? Can I even say this as a Muslim? <laughs> Did I say the few hufaz left religion? It means don't make your kids hafiz. Can we say Nuh al-Islam tarbiyah was bad? <laughs> Why I'm sharing this? Vast majority of the people going into the Islamic school and their graduates and the people who have connected themselves to Quran in whatever way, they are not like this. But we have to focus why minute number are coming wrong. Just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't discuss about those three stunts which left we, who are believers? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is highlighting what was wrong with this son. Is it clear? So do not let shaitan come and put a thought that no, these institutions are not doing anything. They're doing their best. But there are some other factors and that's what we will emphasize. So Nuh alayhi salam at that point, he says, Ya bunay irkab ma'ana. When he saw his son, his son was not in the ship. And the ayah style is very interesting. The ayah says, he spoke to his son not by screaming and yelling. Usually at this point when a disaster will come, you will see a father, a mother, no matter how decent they are, they will scream at their kids in terms of yelling at their kids, not remembering, showing affection. Still he starts with, Ya Bunay, Oh my beloved son, Oh my dear son. He didn't even say, Ya Walad, <laughs> Ya Bunay, I love you. Irkab ma'na. Come with us, board with us, ride with us. But Allah already said, Wakana fi ma'azil. He was already apart. What interesting, Nuh al Islam says, Irkab ma'ana. He did not say, Irkab ma'i. It means Nuh al Islam had a community. He was inviting his son, come and board with us. Come and join us. Wala takum ma'al kafirin. That's the only definite reason what we can think of what make him deviant. Wala takum ma'al kafirin. And do not hang out with the wrong crowd. Do not be in the ma'iyya, in the company of the disbelievers. That's a predominant culture which will take you away. And we know what happened. All of a sudden he said, first of all, he responded to Nuh alayhi salam. He says that I will take refuge. Dad, don't worry about me. Don't put restrictions on me. Nothing will happen to me. I will take refuge on this mountain. I've never seen flood coming on so much on top of hill. He uses logic, he uses rationale to disobey his father. And Nuh al Islam said, today everything will be destroyed except the people who are in the ship. And that's what happened. Next wave came and 
فَكَانَ مِنَ الْمُغْرَكِينَ And he was drowned in front of his father. I just want to actually relate this to our life, what we are learning from this. That our kids also see attraction in modern day freedom and they don't see any danger in it. They see the freedom from the restriction of parents. And still Noor al Islam was able to recognize this and he was having this conversation. Many times parents do not even recognize that predominant culture of the society is taking your kids away until it is too late. And therefore, it is extremely important for us to educate our kids and to provide the environment so that they can be in the company of the good people. Otherwise, wala takum ma'al kafirin will happen. The same conversation we will be having with our kids and may Allah protect all of us. Ameen, Ya Rabbi. What did we learn? Six points and I will end, inshallah. And I will highlight the point number one the most, inshallah. Challenge of Nuh alayhi salam is different than our times. Challenge of Nuh alayhi salam was first, in his time, it was Nuh alayhi salam with his son. In our time, it is both the parents with their kids. He had the concern about one of his son losing the faith. We have concern, or if we are not concerned, even potentially there is a concern that we lose our next generation. The flood of water at his time took his son, remember? And Allah asked him to build a ship so that you can preserve the believers, right? In our times, what is the ship which will preserve our kids? It's actually the concept of community masajid institutions. These are our ship. This is like a second home as said by Rasulullah in Tabarani. A masjid is like a second home to the believers. But I don't want to highlight this on the masjid. I want to highlight what is the flood of our time. That's my topic. The flood of that time was flood of water to the son of Nuh alayhi salam. What is the flood of our time? Flood of our time is not the flood of water which are taking our kids. Flood of our time is actually the flood of modernity, ideology, and then comes from that, comes from the womb of modernity, atheism, liberalism, agnosticism, all these modern deisms, transgenderism, whatever you want to call it. All these modern deisms comes from modernity. And we parents, listen to this carefully, we parents do not even realize that we are living as a Muslim in a postmodern time and there is something which is clear conflict between both these cultures but we will just digest it either because of lack of knowledge or either because we crave or seek attention of modernity. If you ask a kindergarten kid, even there is a proverb, right? Circle, peg, and a square, hole. Can you fit that? Circle, peg, if you try to put that into the square, hole. Can you able to fit that? No. That's a kindergarten 101. Either you need to change a peg or you need to change a hole. Right? This is exactly what happens with Islam and modernity. When you see Islam and modernity goes in conflict, some areas there are compatibility. But that's not the vast majority of the areas. Whenever there is a conflict, instead of changing the and rejecting and denying the modern day ideologies, we actually change the peg. We change the religion. We deny the religious values. Because either we are too afraid of denying, no, 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 this is wrong, the modern day values, or we don't even know what's happening. So just I will tell you three verses three. I will give a separate khutbah on this. Wallahi wa billah I'll be alive inshallah. But this is extremely, extremely serious. Remember three verses three, if you want to find a difference between Islam and modernity. And talk to your kids about this. Because we are living, what's the predominant society? Is it the Islamic culture or is it a modern culture? Is it a modern culture? Godless culture, religious less culture. Remember these three things. This is a major difference between Islam and modernity. And we don't even know this is taking our kids away because all the programs in Netflix and Disney's and talk shows and late night shows and liberal art colleges, 
are showing them the version of modernity not from Islamic angle. First difference, modernity only believe in what they see and they don't believe in unseen. So they believe in body, but do they believe in soul? No. Islam says there is a body and there is a soul. And that's why you see there's a huge difference. Do what is good for your body. Whether it's physical desire, sexual desire, whatever, do it. But no discussion about nourishing your soul because you can't see soul. Right? That's the first difference. Second, modernity recognizes dunya because you can see dunya, solar systems and everything and sun. But they don't recognize akhirah because you can't see akhirah. So all of a sudden prayer becomes liability because we pray because we can get reward in akhirah. Modernity denies. So that's in the back seat. Do you get my point? Prayers are only symbolic. When an interfaith event will happen, then Imam Asi will be invited to pray for a symbolic thing. They're not praying from the heart. Are you following? Third, modernity believes in human existence because we can see human being, right? But they don't believe in existence of Allah. Because you can't see Allah. And when you don't believe in Allah, Allah is not center of your life. Then human is center of your life. This is modern day ana rabbukum al-a'la. From theocentric, now we are human centric. Now do whatever is good for you. Forget akhirah. Forget Allah. Forget your soul. That's the claim of modernity. And we don't even know that all this entire surrounding and environment slowly and gradually, directly or indirectly, is talking about this. I'll give you just one example. I don't know how many of you are aware of Miss Marvel. Recently, there is a show which is released on Disney. First of all, Disney, two months ago, Disney president accepted that 50% of our characters will be LGBTQ. That's their inclusive rate, 50% of their characters. Bef before Miss Marvel, two of their Marvel series are banned in some of the Muslim countries because of the same reasons. Just FYI, just do some Google search. And here we go, a Pakistani Muslim individual is being highlighted. And because we have such a slave mentality that Disney is giving attention to our community. Oh, mashallah, all my duas of the Hajjud and Ramadan came true. What they, they want to promote Islamic values? I just heard and did some research before coming to do some podcasts and listen to the podcast also. And I found out that what they are teaching is that one individual, one girl raised in an environment where parents are strict, she want to break the shackles of the toxic environment of parenting and she want to find her own self. This is kind of promoting modernism, but you don't even know what modernity does. And brother is religious, he sounds weird. He's trying to stop her. And therefore, if she achieved her goal, she's a superhero of Muslims. And the sad part is, the sad part is, again, the sad part is, we are looking at this with family eating popcorn, and we are thinking, mashallah, see, Muslims are coming. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our kids. Then the same kids, you are looking with your family and with your kids about these things. You will be sitting with the same kids at Imam's office after 10 years that they are confused about Islam. But that might be too late. Recognize right now like Noor Ali Salam did. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and our kids. Ameen. Ya Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa ala amma ba'd. If you are thinking why I'm giving a second khutbah indirectly or directly about these issues, then you must be kidding. You know which month is this, right? 
fake, false, trashy, filthy ideologies are teaching their trashy, filthy ideas for an entire month to our kids. And I cannot even tell you Islamic response on the second consecutive Friday Jum'a Khutbah. This is what modernity did to us. You don't want to even listen to Quran and Sunnah about that issue because you are so apologetic. What can we learn from Nuh This is first. Recognize modernity is a huge issue. Take the good, but recognize what is hidden behind the good also. Second, if you are parents, wake up. Wake up before it's too late. You know, half of you are thinking right now, Imam, I know you told me that the kids who went to Islamic school, some of them left Islam and mashallah, the kids who memorize Quran. But my kid, I know I trust my kid. Do you trust your kid and your tarbiyah more than the tarbiyah of Nuh alayhi salam? Do you do that? You're fooling yourself. Wake up. Take action. Give them good sense of community. Before it's too late. Third, give your kids proper time. Don't think that Islamic school or masjid or this hip program or that will going to fix the issue. One thing we know that Nuh al Islam is still talking to his son. He was a disbeliever. He didn't just chop his hands off. He's still talking to his son, inviting his son back. How many times we have seen in the Quran, father is talking to his son. Yaqub is talking to Yusuf. Ibrahim is talking to his father. And here we see Nuh is talking to his son. You will see all the time father is talking to his son is a consistent sunnah in the Quran. Because we live in such a busy lifestyle. Sometimes both the parents are working and with these gadgets in the house, you don't even know what ideology your kids are learning and exposed to. Last two things, we need to be ahead of the game. We need to be ahead of the game. Most of our khutbas, conferences on these issues are in reactive majors. Oh, this happened in our community, I need to give khutbah. Reactive. Become proactive. That this can happen, let's address this. But the problem is, I have to say it, Muslim community is messed up here. We don't know what are the real issues. We don't know what are the real issues. And if we know, then we don't have authority. Just like I said, the ship of Nuh al Islam in our times are the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make sure the houses of Allah are strong. Make sure they are keep moving forward. The ship is sailing. The ship should not be drowned in the wave. That's our effort which we should put. And the last thing, inshallah, is that selecting a righteous spouse. In the story of Nuh alayhi salam, we know from Surah Hud, one of his son died and is a disbeliever. We know from Surah Tahrim that actually his wife was not practicing and eventually uh, she didn't support her husband. So there is a Al-Quran One of the principles of understanding the Quran is that one principle of the Quran will explain other principle of the Quran. That wife of Nuh al Islam was not practicing, so he didn't get complete support in raising the kids as you should get with your spouse. When you are selecting your spouse, that's the first step of deciding where I want to see my kids. Be very careful. And this is for husband, for wife, wife for the husband. Be very careful. Be very careful whom you want to spend your life with in this dunya and in akhirah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us understanding and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and our kids and our entire progeny and our generation. Ameen. Allahu Akbar.